Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I am quite fine. Got some uh, big big news today. We did, and really, I was all set to talk about a bunch of other stuff, but, you know, we're calling an audible. Omaha, Omaha, Omaha yeah. Steaks, by the way. We'll be talking about them in a little bit, but this episode is brought to you by Sling TV. Sling yeah. TV is absolutely awesome. Um, that was Jimmy. a great audible. You already called a great audible. Uh, Jimmy, um, Keon Keeley, I mean, like out of the not, not out of the blue commits to Alabama because we all thought he would eventually commit to Alabama, but out of the blue in the sense that you know, sitting here on a Monday morning, I didn't think he was going to be committed. Right. No, it was, uh, I mean, uh, we, we didn't have a, a long heads up. Um, uh, the thing is a little surprising to me is, and since it got this close, uh, if you ask me over the weekend. Hey, uh, what's Keon going to do? I would have guessed he would have just signed on signing day. I think it's a much smarter idea, frankly, for, in terms of building a brand to go ahead and commit now. Kids that uh, sign on signing day, uh, I would tell them all, I get it. I get that you're waiting for waiting till Christmas to open your present. Uh, so I get that. But if you wait until signing day, you're, you're going to get lost in the shuffle, even if you're a five star. I mean, there's so much recruiting news in that 24-hour cycle that even the loudest screams are muffled. Uh, it, it, so uh, Keon, I think, was much uh, brighter today uh, to uh, go ahead and commit, um, you know, a week before, more than a week before signing day, because now he's sort of uh, won the news cycle for several hours today in terms of recruiting this is going to be the story and uh and, and and it's a way for keon to start building a brand a national brand uh beyond alabama so uh smart idea i think from him uh and uh wow the 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 impact um you know there's going to be a lot of will talk about his skill set in a minute uh there's going to be obvious will anderson comparisons i think he's a different player but the fact that he is projected to be a dominant college football pass rusher and will play Will's position at Alabama, I mean, that comp is just. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm sorry, I did my uh, very quick reflexes of pulling up a, a crane kick picture of Keon Keeley distract you while you were talking? Or did you even get to see it? I, I did see it, and I was okay. super impressed you could do that so quickly because, as we know, uh, we're recording at uh, at 108 at 100. Yeah. That's pretty good. Some quick action. Yeah. Some quick action to act in there. Well, yeah. so, uh, so audible. They're not a sponsor. So no, they're not. But uh, so you know, this is huge news. He, I would say, I'm gonna I'm gonna look him up on on three really quickly. Do you know where you guys have him on the on the national scale? Um, uh, five star number one at his position. Uh, overall, maybe number three or four. I mean, and I haven't looked at it myself. Frankly, I've been busy with Keon Keeley's stuff and weirdly I haven't looked at that. But I believe uh, number one at his position and three or four, sometimes <clears throat> at on three, we really try to use the on three consensus and not our own ranking. Uh, and I get mm -hmm. that because on three consensus is what 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 we believe should be the recognized. That should be like when we're, our goal is, and, and we'll look we believe what it should be, Luke, is when people water day and they're saying Keon Keeley was the third ranked player in his class per the on three consensus. So we always use the consensus. But the fact of the matter is we have the most confidence in our own rankings, the on three rankings, because uh, we have the best people in the business working for us. Yeah. And he is number three in your rankings. He's number 11 census, which is odd. I mean, I, he's definitely in the top 10 on 24-7. I don't have time while we're recording this to go through all of them, but um, for those who don't know, I'm just going to fill in a few things here. He is a 6'6", 245-pound edge rusher uh, from Berkeley Prep down there in Tampa, Florida. Uh, just an absolutely huge get. Had, had offers from practically everybody. Of course, most people know he was committed to Notre Dame at first, um, then he backed off that commitment. This is uh, just huge. Uh, is he an early enrollee, Jimmy? I believe so, yes. Okay. Not 100% on that. I mean, it, 
not a hundred percent on that, but I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty certain. I think I would know if he wasn't. The thing about the rule for this year, Lucas, it's, it's almost like this: uh, if you're committed, you're signing early, you're enrolling early. Uh, and if I said that for every single kid, I would get it right 80% of the time. 80% of these guys are enrolling early in this particular class. Uh, assuming we have the room, the, the room, people never want to talk about room. I'm the only one that talks about room. This is everybody off because I'm always talking about the one thing nobody else talks about. But the fact is, in case people don't realize, people might know. Oh, there's an 85 scholarship limit. That's not just in the fall year round. You can never have over 85 on scholarship at one time. So for these early enrollees, they have to fit in under the 85. And uh, so hopefully there'll be room for all of them. Jimmy, I mean, I think it's the same type of uh, line of thinking that Delta has that, uh, you know, they're going to oversell their flights because they know some people aren't going to show up for whatever reason or are going to transfer to Southwest <laughs> or whatever. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, and if, it, and if it turns out that they have to give somebody the bad news, then they just give them the bad news mm -hmm. and they try and make it as, as, uh, right. as soft of a landing as possible. But um, Well, they try not to oversell, but then things like Najee Harris doesn't go pro. So then what do you do? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean that, I just use that as a funny example of a good surprise. I mean, most of the kids that they expect to go pro do, and then a couple of kids that pro will surprise you, like that one, because um, running backs that are, you know, thought to be day one or day two picks, uh, they they tend to leave early. Uh, Najee didn't, but the point is, uh, at at some point, you're doing some guesswork on how much room you're going to have. Uh, ends up because of the portal. I think Alabama is going to have room for uh, any early enrollee who can uh, uh, enroll early, and and Keon should be one of those guys. And man, uh, Keon is such a good player, Luke. One of the reasons I like Keon so much, and I said this about Bryce three years ago. I remember this spiel on our show talking about Bryce this way. You know, we can sit here and do a whole show on the physical skills, and we should because that's why he's ranked third in the by on three and eleventh in the consensus. Uh, because if you're the eleventh best football prospect in, in the entire United States, you're really special. Uh, so we could talk about the physical skills, the height, the length, the explosion, the burst, the the speed, uh, the aggressiveness, the physicality. He's got all those things. That's why he's ranked where he's ranked. He's a super kid. He's smart. He's generous. Uh, he, 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 he wants to do well academically and he does, he's a prep school kid. He's basically for lack of a better term, an Eagle scout. I mean, th this kid does everything right. And, and he, he, he's, there's, he's got some, some charismatic, some charisma to him, some magnetism, some, the same sort of things Bryce were had. You about, uh, were you about to combine charisma and magnetism? I was going to say. <laughs> charisma, he, magnetism? charismatic. Actually, um, that would have been funnier. It, it's it's worse than that. It's not as funny because I was going to say charismatic, but then charisma came out and then it was just botched, you know, from that point. But, uh, so charismatic is really what I'm trying to say. A lot Charismagnetism, like though, that is like, do you know, remember the old Simpsons episode where uh, Homer was uh, really down about something and Lisa said, you know, Dad, you, you need to be optimistic here, you know, the Chinese have the same word for crisis as they do for opportunity. He goes, that's right. Crisitunity. So, uh, I, I need to tell everybody about Omaha Steaks, Jimmy. And look, when I do this, I'm also going to, uh, I've got, I'm directed to put this overlay. Okay. And I love it. It's great. Um, it's awesome. But here's what I'm going to do instead. Now that I'm going to talk about Omaha Steaks, bam. How about that? I found this picture. This absolutely delicious. I love Omaha steaks. This I'm not kidding, guys. I, I'm not kidding. My dad sends uh, my three children in Ohio um, Omaha steaks like three or four times a year just because they absolutely love it. Like he did it one time, and every time they've come back to Alabama, they're like, "Can you please send us some more of this?" So he just sends it to them all the time. And, and uh, my kids have, have to cook all this stuff. They just love it. You can get whatever you want. I mean, that filet looks absolutely delicious. It's about lunchtime for me right now, and I didn't go have a lunch, so I would love to have some Omaha steak right now. Um, but Omaha Steaks has cut prices 50% site-wide to make you the gift-giving hero that you always wanted to be. The holidays are here. 
Achieve gift, gifting greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha steaks. It's a perfect gift. I'm telling you, I'm going to give it to a friend of mine that lets me sit in his box sometimes at Alabama games. I can't wait to do that. Omaha Steaks have put together a delicious selection of various gift packages to make shopping for the ones you love nice and easy. Go to omahasteaks.com and take advantage of 50% off site wide. Plus, use code locked on. Use code locked on at checkout to get an additional $40 off your order. I mean, they're practically giving you steaks here. Visit omahasteaks.com, take advantage of 50% off site wide. Plus, use promo code locked on. That's all one word at checkout to get that extra $40 off. A minimum order may be required, but if these discounts, what in the heck does it matter? You need to go to Omaha Steaks and check them out. I'm telling you, this stuff is absolutely delicious. Jimmy loves it. I love it. My kids love it. But everybody loves it. You can beat Nick. You can beat a bush. You can't beat Omaha Steaks. Okay, Jimmy, um, I'm sure we'll talk about Keon Keeley some more. I'm going to do a podcast with our main man, John Garcia, tomorrow, too. Um, so I'm sure I'll be talking about that. But I want to just throw this quickly out there because this was going to be one of our long segment talking points, but it's not going to be any more. So I'm going to just throw it out there. Uh, Will Anderson won the Lot Award. He has he has won literally everything this side of an Oscar this season, and um, he is a consensus first team All American. Uh, all these things, I mean, all while not having as good a season as he had last year. I mean, that, that's kind of crazy. Um, so, but if, if anybody else has the season he has, we're talking about them. I mean, the nation is talking about him in such glowing regard. You can't believe it. But as Alabama fans, because Will Anderson's year wasn't as good as last year and because the team didn't in the playoffs, we're probably not giving him as much credit as we should. This guy is going to be a top five NFL pick, maybe a top two NFL pick. Um, absolutely love him. Just a class act all the way around a dyed in the wool bammer and a Saban bot. And we just love him. And Will Anderson, we salute you. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, chime in. Okay. <laughs> I love, well, I love that you did the Will Anderson thing on Keon Keeley day here. I mean, cause you know, we're hoping to get the same sort of impact out of Keon. Will is so good off the field as not just, not just that he's so good in his interviews, he's such an ambassador for Alabama. I mean, that's really what Will is. He's an ambassador for Nick Saban's Alabama. And Keon Keeley has a chance to be the same guy. I mean, in the sense that Keon, like Will, like Bryce, is a guy that Alabama is going to want front and center uh, in front of the camera as often as possible. He'll be an advertiser's dream. He'll be an NIL mega force. And that's assuming he gets on the field and he's as good as uh, we believe he's going to be. It'll be interesting to see what kind of opportunity he gets right away. Alabama will likely return Chris Braswell and Dallas Turner as the top outside linebackers. And almost without notice, Luke, a guy that was getting on the field late in the year, to the surprise of many, when Darius Robinson was playing more and more down the stretch, even played with the first team about three snaps versus Auburn in the last game. No, not garbage time. First team snaps with the other guys. So, uh, looks like he's turned the corner. So that's three. We know that that Keanu Coates there. We know that Jeremiah Alexander's there. So, you know, uh, I will talk about all offseason when people say, hey, it's 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 not always about does he have the ability to get on the field as a freshman. The answer is going to be, of course he does. He's Keon Keeley. Watch he, Of course he does. But what opportunity will he have? Uh, he's going to have to leapfrog a lot of really good while. Yeah, that's so true. And I'll tell you something else. Look, I love having Keon Keeley. I love what you're saying about him in terms of how Will Anderson like he is in terms of just being a good guy and an ambassador for Alabama. I think all that's awesome. Now, juxtapose that with, I, I think we also need a, a, a dude that just like maybe Eden is nice. <laughs> you know, maybe <laughs> it, it, not necessarily a non-ambassador, but you're sort of like, um, I don't need to cross that guy. I've always said this. At the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game for years, I got to interview these kids so much. I got a little bit stricter about this, so it's not as easy for me just to go on the field, even with my passes, and just interview kids while they stretch and all that stuff because they, they – 
they don't like that as much anymore. But um, I interviewed Ryan Anderson, never forget it. He scared me to death talking to him. He was looking at me the whole time, sort of swaying side to side. And he was like, I just want to get on the field. I just want to hit somebody. I want to hit somebody. I want to hit him right now. And I'm thinking, okay, if he really means right now, I'm the only thing in front of him. That's bad. <laughs> um, and somebody who reminded me of that past week is Peter Woods. How, how awesome would it be to have Peter Woods uh, alongside uh, uh, Keon Keeley? Now, we, maybe we get James Smith, and James Smith has the same disposition right. and is just as good a defensive lineman. But I'm just saying, I just saw Peter Woods. I just saw him at the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game. I saw him have seven tackles for a loss. I saw him abuse offensive linemen routinely. I saw him offensive end and defensive tackle. I saw him line up in the, in the wildcat. You know, I, I'm just saying it, um, it. it's great to have an ambassador like Keon Keeley, and I'm so thankful he's a part of this class. I think you also got to have some dudes that um, maybe they just got a – maybe they got an edge about him. I'm not saying Keon Keeley doesn't edge. I don't want people to misinterpret that either. I'm just saying – I think people understand what I'm saying. I think they do. I don't know how to put this into words. Well, sometimes uh, we're, we're trying to get tougher on de- – I mean, I think yeah. tougher is the word a lot of people are saying <clears> with defense – Tougher, and then when I say, "Hey, we're signing another great guy," <laughs> yeah. that doesn't sound like it's addressing the toughness issue. But uh, Keon, uh, go go out there and match Will's about your, your you know match Will's numbers in terms of tackles for loss, hurries, pressures, and sacks and tackles. Uh, do all that. We'll worry about your attitude later. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to look. If he puts up half production of Will Anderson, I think he's had a fabulous career. Um, okay, Jimmy, when we come back, I want to. Well, first of all, before we do this, because I want to spend the whole next segment on basketball, really quickly, um, it's starting to look more and more like Oklahoma and Texas joined the league in 2024, which I'm all for. Which, if that happens, then I'm going to assume 2024 will also be the expanded playoffs, like everybody wants to move those up to. Mm-hmm. Because if you get those pieces moved around correctly, along with USC and UCLA to the Big Ten, I think there's no reason not to go ahead and expand the playoffs. I mean, I think there will be a lot of clamoring for that. So if they do, I mean, man, that's, that's just super interesting because all of a sudden in 2024, you know, I know Alabama plays at Wisconsin that year. They also have South Florida, I believe, on the schedule. And, again, you know, South Florida South Florida, but still there's a bunch of dudes from Tampa. Um, and then uh, – you could have Oklahoma and or Texas on the schedule. I wonder what our schedule will look like. I mean, as soon as I heard that this morning, like I, I was immediately thinking about, man, what could Alabama's schedule in 2024 be? It could be absolutely murderous. But anyway, I'm just throwing that news out there. No reason to have a whole bunch of talk about it. It's Brett McMurphy tweeted it that it should be done within about a month. Yeah, and I think they've already decided to uh, to, to move the playoffs to 2024. That might have chicken and egg. You know the expand. I mean, which one came expanding or or the playoff? I think it's all going to happen at once, like you said, Luke. Uh, that 2024, uh, this latest realignment will take place. Uh, so that that means what, what's weird or exciting or however you want, how, however anybody feels about it. Next season, 2023, will not only be the last season; it'll also be the last season we may ever see of SEC East and SEC West. The divisions will will disappear. And it will be one big, happy 16-team league. And the top two teams in the league will uh, play for the SEC championship in what amounts to a very uh, weird game now where 12 will do in this conference championship game. Uh, and they're not going to get rid of it. I've heard so many people say, oh, just get rid of it. That's when you say just get rid of it, you're saying let's just get rid of $15 million. Who needs it? You know, uh, no, they're not getting rid of it. That money um, is budgeted in. Then they don't budget money out. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, I want to tell before I talk about Built Bar, I want to remind everybody that you know, look, Jimmy and I have been pretty anti-expansion, right? I mean, not we understood it was going to expand. We definitely didn't want it to go to twelve, go into eight. I think we could all live with. I think eight is fine, but because we're going to go to twelve, it is what it is. All those people who love the idea of going to 12 in playoffs the in the nfc south is going to host a playoff game just every team in the nfc south has a losing record and yeah. none of them are out of it and one of them is going to host a playoff game and if somebody can tell me that that is the right way to do a play- playoff i'm going to tell you you're just wrong that is the way to do a playoff but 
That's fine. It is what it is. I'm not going to say any more about it. Instead, I'm going to tell you about Built Bar because I need to pause the podcast for a minute to tell you about Built Bar. And now we're going to pause for a minute. So they've got all these new flavors, right? Cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, coconut brownie topper, all kind of coconuts and toppers and everything. White chocolate peppermint granola. It's built to take on granola bar. So it's more filling and insanely tasty. Uh, and candy cane brownie puff. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. Look, I'm going to, I'm, I'm reading. Reaching over into a, some gifts that I'm giving because I, I brought my son who's a workout warrior kind of guy like he does MMA stuff and all that. And he doesn't eat crap like I eat crap. He eats nothing but good built bars and stuff that's good for you. And while I'm over here scarfing down Snickers half time at Christmas time, he'll have a built bar and it's filling and it's awesome. And you know what I did today just because I knew I was going to be talking about built bar? I had a built bar for lunch. I had a built bar. So, I mean, I enjoyed it. I had it a while back. It really would, it was more like brunch, but uh, I still had it and I loved it. It's one of these mint brownies that I got and I love them. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code locked on 15. That's locked on 15, all one word, locked on 15 at built.com. And you can go get whatever built bars you want. You can mix and match and all that stuff. They're delicious. You want built bar, built.com, locked on 15 is the promo. Jimmy, I want to spend this last segment talking about basketball. It deserves its own segment. I understand we're all fired up about Keon Keeley. I understand we're all, uh, you know, waving tearful goodbyes probably to Bryce and to Will Anderson, Jordan Battle, Brian Branch likely, et cetera. By the way, Battle could come back. I forgot about that. He's not, I'm sure, but he could. He could. He could. He's got a COVID year. I, I would be shocked. You know, he started for four years. I mean, he, he even started yeah. as a freshman nine package. Right. So I, I, I'm sure he's moving on. He's he's one of the last. I don't know what's going on with the Senior Bowl uh, invite in terms of he, his invitation. To senior Bowl has not been publicly. He was invited. Uh, you know, so we'll we'll say I'm, I'm assuming this week we'll hear that Battle and Henry Toa Toa are in the Senior Bowl. That's what I'm assuming. All right. Basketball moves up to number four in the AP poll for the first time in the Nick Saban era. Basketball is ranked ahead of football. Um, that's not, I mean, I was going to say that's crazy, but it's really not crazy because, I mean, right. Alabama football has been so good, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, right. Noah Clowney wins SEC Freshman of the Week again. Um, I, I still can't get over uh, Alabama's winning that game with Brandon Miller scoring eight points only from the chair and going over from the field. I mean, that's – that that's crazy. That's insane. Um, and man, I, whatever we need to do to lock down my main man, Nate Oates, I think we need to do. And, um, I understand I had a couple of folks at Twitter, not really come at me, but just say, Hey, you know, if we really want, we got to increase the facilities. And I want to say, Hey, y'all should listen to locked on Bama because yeah, we want, we all want a better facility. And had I won the $2 million lottery, I, I dream about this. I would have said, here's, here's 50 million for Alabama to build a new facility if y'all round up the rest of it. I think they would have. But what Alabama would probably have said is put $25 million in NIL and we'll still play in this airport hangar we have. And, and that's, that's I think that's the way of the world right now. The, the facilities are nice. They're a nice little selling point. It's great to have a waterfall and, uh, you know, whatever else you've got, got there and all these on-site chefs. But in the end, I mean, the kids won't, they'd rather just have the money. I mean, it's like at Christmas, if your aunt comes up to you and says, I'm going to buy you a sweater or, you know, for $50 or I'll give you $45. You say, yeah, I'll take the money. I don't need a sweater. So. <laughs> no, I think it's even more. I think it's more like this. I mean, I feel even more. I think it's the aunt going, would you rather open your socks in a really nice house. So you're opening up your present and, and it's going to be socks and you can do it in this really nice, beautiful house. Or we're just going to open up a house next to the crapper. We're going to the toilet next to the toilet and we're going to open up our, our presents there, but you're going to get a new bike. Every kid is going to take the bike in the outhouse as opposed to the socks in the mansion. I mean, that's just a fact that you are exactly right. They want money they don't care as much about and if people just think we can't recruit playing in coleman coliseum have you seen our team play have you seen good. them play? 
way, does it look like we can't recruit with our current facilities? And by the way, I think all the people that complain about our facilities have never been to the practice facility. They've never walked in there. If they walked in and the basket, the, the basketball stuff that's around the basketball practice facility, they probably wouldn't say that. I mean, I know my thought was when I saw the basketball facility was, oh, my God, what must North Carolina have? Yeah. I mean, like, how could it be any better than this? I, I know complaints about Coleman, but look, this is a fact. Since the day we dreamed up the idea that we needed a new basketball arena, the whole college sports world was lifted and turned on its head. Now you got to pay the players. That's priority number one. Building facilities is down there around number 20 now. Used to be number one. Now it's like number 20. Um, and, and, Jimmy, here's the thing. I, I believe this wholeheartedly. And now there, there probably won't be any that, that admit it. But, you know, Auburn just built this new football facility that's apparently really nice. I've seen pictures of it. It looks great. I mean, it really does. It does. It's nice. And it, it can be a rooting tool if you already have it. If you Freeze were asked privately, he'd say, I, if I could go back and do over and know I was going to be Auburn's head coach, I would say, forget building that. Give me right. half that money for my NIL. But they had, but one thing, they had started building that no, facility I know. before NIL. I, I, that, I, the girders were in the ground and the concrete was poured. I agree. And then NIL happened, you know. So no, I, I agree that Auburn, Auburn might have done it differently. Uh, had they, you know, maybe there was a phase two. Maybe, hey, next we're going to build X and now it won't be built. There, yeah. and, and, and the way this happens, folks, is it's pretty, pretty simple. We can't go in. Uh, the same people and companies and corporations they go to to build things like a new basketball arena are the exact same people they go to to fund the NIL. These aren't two separate groups of people. This is the same people. They're diverting money from one project to another, but they need to do both. And if you're complaining that there's not enough money to do both, then write Elon Musk a letter and say, you're not spending your money on the right things. And, and no one has a right to go to Elon and say, I don't like what you're doing with your personal money. I mean, the, these people, there's not enough money to do everything. But the first priority is NIL. Yeah. And I mean, again, I'm not taking, I wouldn't necessarily taking a shot at Auburn there. I know some people may read into that like that. No. What I'm saying is, you know, they, everything was already in motion. So yeah, that was going to be finished because you sort of half a building, you know, but if you, if Hugh Freeze could have looked right. in the future five years ago and said, okay, I'm going to be Auburn's head coach. And right now I need to tell people in advance, like, Hey, y'all need to put this money in NIL, not put it towards these right. facilities because kids will work out in anything. I mean, they'll work right. out outside like a, like the prison yards. I mean, you know, just put a chain link fence and some dumbbells right. out there. If they make $500,000 a year, you know, <laughs> I mean, so, yep. I mean, I think that's that's the way that it's going to be from now on. And what's going to be funny, Jimmy, and we will not get into this right now. The show is literally over. But eventually, see, a lot of cities are going to need upgrades because they're going to have to have upgrades and they're going to have to. Yeah. And then you're going to have to divert funds. And that's when you're going to take a dip in your recruiting. So anyway, that's all going to happen. We'll talk about all that later. But anyway, happy Keon Keeley Day to, to all those who celebrate. And until next time, roll tight, everybody. Roll time.